What is good, everybody? We are live. Welcome to the Worldwide Company of Gamers podcast. You might notice, guys, there's been a significant change to the look of the show. Um, and I guess it, it doesn't really require much guesswork <laughs> what's happened. Very, very proud to announce to all of you tonight, my dudes, that we have an official sponsor and it's more of a partnership with um, Icon Era. Now, if you don't know Icon Era, you need to. Uh, I've been, I've spoken about them a few times on the show. Um, they're a forum similar to, I guess, other forums, except they're, they're new and they're trying to do things right and not allow it just to spiral into nonsensical console warring and silly, silly articles that just are out to get clicks. It's slightly more moderated um, than, say, Reset Era or Reddit. And it provides amazing information. Oh, shit, I'm disconnected. Uh, sorry, guys. It just disconnected, then reconnected. I'm, I'm very sorry, I'm having issues. <laughs> Ah, shit, that's the last thing we need tonight on this stream. But, um... Okay, it's yeah. just a quick hiccup. But, um... But, yeah, guys, uh... Icon Era is our official sponsor. And it's gonna open... Open doors for the show. For... For them as well. As we grow, more people will know about them. And as they grow, more people will know about us. Um, and it's really fitting because we try to keep things objective on this sh on this panel. We try to kind of eliminate the console wars and fanboyism and try to keep things a little bit more legit. Um, and that being said, you know, so does so does Icon Era. So it's kind of a good fit, really. It's a little bit small tonight, a little bit cozy. We've got just Retro and myself. Not sure who else is joining us. Retro. That's you... disrespectful, bro. What? I said, what do you mean, just retro? That's disrespectful, no, bro. I said, it's just us. It's just us, me me and retro. Just us two. I don't like the way you said it. I don't oh, like I'm the sorry, tone. Brother. Just little <laughs> retro. Little... <laughs> I'm just saying. Th this little guy on the panel who just kind of came onto the, sh onto the show without even an invitation. No idea who he is. Um, no, but on a, on a serious note, we're, we're, it's a bit of a special episode tonight, guys. We're not really going to stick around for too long. Uh, we're going to watch the state of play in seven minutes' time, share our thoughts and all that good stuff, um, and just sit and chill with you guys and watch this awesome show. And we'll use this bad boy, this main screen. So this is the the full screen um view which we will use for you guys for your viewing leisure and pleasure um hope you like it uh, a bit bit of an overhaul really um to the whole aesthetic and look so do hope you enjoy that but yeah guys uh, shout out to everyone in the chat we've got worry wanna oh what's good buddy great to see you here we've got book roger the og Tubbs Gaming. Is it Tubbs Gaming or Tubbs Z Gaming? I, I never can never figure that out. But I'm glad you're here, buddy. Thank you for sharing this out. Appreciate you. Compost Smurf. It's good to see you here as always, buddy. Gundam fan. What is good? Brian King, my dude. So good that you're here. Um, is the sponsor Game Pass. <laughs> Funny book. Um, hell no. Uh, I'd be significantly richer if it was. <laughs> um, uh, Toolman, my dude. Great that you're here as well. DE, awesome to see you here, buddy. Dracula, Vadomni. That is quite a name. I love it. What is good, everyone? Uh, thanks for being here to chill with us. Uh, Feeling a little bit guilty. My boy Saltiest Gaming is live streaming as well. So if you guys don't want to stick around and want to want to watch his uh, his live stream as well, by all means do. Shout out to my boy Saltiest Gaming. Um, but yeah, uh, 
It's it's um, I can imagine quite a few people are live streaming tonight, aren't they, Retro? Uh, Salty. Oh, I mean, I know I know Persona is as well. Well, it's the first kind of stuff we're getting from Sony in quite a while. You know, anything kind of halfway meaty. So, yeah, everybody's going to be streaming this, man. Yeah, it's a big deal. Shout out to Ice Queen. What's good, Don? Love to see you here, uh, as always. And Merry World Cups as well. <laughs> oh, wow. um, so, how have you been, Retro, my guy? Been all right? I've been well, bro. Um, just playing a little bit of Gran Turismo today. Um trying to get into destiny too um i'm really late to the party on that um so yeah just trying to take everything in man <laughs> and get time on everything i love it oh i got that hell singer as well but i haven't been able to play it yet oh, i've just downloaded that as well i got it um yeah that game. it's a perfect that. price range as well it's only like 35 quid here in the UK yeah what's the like, price man yeah it's it's amazing. I, I think that's very good of them to do that because it going gate day one to Game Pass could have resulted in maybe some people going, Oh, I'm not paying full price for that. But so for them yeah, to, yeah. to kind of I be... think the uh I think the two day early access helped as well, because that mm. kind of sold me on it too. That honestly, like that that game alone has proved to me that demos work. Like <laughs> that yeah. demo was the best demo I've played since Spider Man demo on ps1 <laughs> like that that is a phenomenal <laughs> demo uh it is amazing it was just perfection like the whole first level to continue to replay and the music never got boring it was phenomenal well it worked for me and i'm far from what you would call a metal fan do you know what i mean i really yeah. am i know some of the bands and stuff and some of the names but overall it's not really my genre of music but I mean, yeah, the gameplay is so addictive, and once you get into that timing, that beat, it just, yeah, you kind of, you kind of go into a zone. Yo, retro, uh, message Doomsayer and see if he wants to jump on. If he's not busy, yeah, I will do. Get, get his ass on here. It'll be yeah, great for him to join us. Um. So how have you been chat? What have you guys been playing? Buck? I'm guessing you're just still on your Nintendo DS playing Xenoblade. Um, what about you, Don? What games you've been playing? Oh yeah, Gundam, Metal Gear Solid 2 demo demo on PS2 was amazing. I agree. Phenomenal. Oh, I do miss demos that came with magazines, man. They were the days. Um so yeah guys go check out iconera.com when you can it is worth it all the the latest news and i mean real news consolidated with full slideshows in fact i'll i'll get up icon era now for you guys yeah you should it's um, it's it's pretty smart the way they've put it together man it's, uh, it's phenomenal I'll, it's a good resource hold on here we go so this guy's is icon era it has sliding panels for you to see the latest news, uh, for, forum um, kind of uh, posts, uh, blogs, um, sections such as technology and analysis, um, communities, uh, talks of different topics. Um, all branded PlayStation, Nintendo, Discussion, Xbox, PC. So it's really kind of streamlined. It, it, it highlights and presents all the information in a really kind of concise and consolidated way. Um, and the moderating team, they are working hard on this, like full time, to get it better and better and improve it and improve it. Don't know why I'm logged out. That's weird. Um... Ah, oh, crap. Forgot my password. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to fix, fix that next time. But yeah, I've, I've made a few, a few posts on it, including what to expect for next gen. It's just a really good site. Um, and long may it grow. Um, 
starting in 42 seconds guys the show is starting very very soon I'm excited what are you expecting from the show guys uh, I just want one thing just one thing what? PlayStation VR 2 support for my Gran Turismo 7 everything else would just be, be icing on the cake that would be absolutely amazing my days it's what I really want man I might have to ask Social Destruct if he would mind me trading my my Oculus for PSVR 2. <laughs> if he would mind. Oh shit, here we go. I couldn't see him having a problem with it, man. He's a big supporter of PSVR 2. Yeah. I mean, he's he. I think if, if anyone's going to be more excited than me, it's him. Let's go. We're oh, live. Here we go. Kazuya and Jin. Oh my god, we're gonna need seconds. Fight. Fight. Yo! Is this Tekken 8? Tekken this is new Tekken in game. Look at it! Street Fighter who? Oh! This looks dope. Give me this now. Hey, Sev's here. What's good, Sev? Sev! My brother! I'm not sure if he's on, on Discord. Oh, I need to turn the volume up. Sorry, guys. Let me turn the volume up. Oh my days! Like they're my two favorite characters, by the way, in Tekken, other than Ling Sao Yu. How's the streaming quality, guys? Are you happy with it? Does it look good? It's looking well on my end, bro. Oh my days, that looks phenomenal. Yeah. PS5 exclusive. Yeah. Oh. No way. What? I love it. It's official. That's amazing. Tekken 8 is coming to exclusive the PlayStation 5 though, I don't console know. courtesy of our battle-hardened friends at Bandai Namco Entertainment. Could be. Could be an exclusive. Now, I'm let's check sure. in on two games in development for PlayStation VR 2. Oh. VR Star Wars games, cool. The story I was telling, it was about a certain droid repair tech who had no business getting into this kind of trouble. But there they were, standing against evil wherever it popped up. Is this better, guys? If I speak closer to the mic, I'm not going to disrupt what you're watching to fix my mic. It might take me a while, so. Let me know how this sounds. Hello, my friend. Great to hear. Glad, glad the mic's okay. Ready for battle. So I wasn't sure about that. PSVR 2 so far isn't selling me. <laughs> I don't know guys, these just seem like games that you play for half an hour and put down and I'm just not that kind of gamer. Listen, they've got to, they've got to show us the fluff. You know what I mean? Not, for a, not in a 20 minute state of play though bro. It's 20 minutes, come on. This is like... Listen, I, you have to show something for everyone, you know what I mean? Yeah, this is just... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no, don't get me wrong, I'm not into this kind of game me. at all. This, this wouldn't be for me, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I can't knock it till I tried it, I guess, but... 
We yeah, need like it's, these kind of ones the me. We need Half Life Alex 2.0. You know what I mean? With interactable objects you can use as weapons. From the ground up and will be available oh, shit. outside of Japan for oh, the first time. Uh, ground up remake. Okay, let's go. Where do we get? Let's go. What's this? What's good,トーマン。もう一人の自分に切られることになるんやからな。なあ。坂本龍馬さんよ。Wait. Why is this? Is no this, idea, bro. Is this on a Musha? No, that's a uh, Capcom. All oh, right, yeah, not Sega. I don't know, bro. Oh, like a dragon, a shinny. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Yeah. Hello, Madam Mason. I understand you have a shop to sell. I think you will find my terms quite. Oh, yeah, Harry Potter. What's the catch? You are wise to be wary. Why is your mistress selling the shop? There'll be a straight up Slytherin, you know. I'm using killing curse on Evil. everyone. <laughs> yeah, everyone's getting it, man. Yeah, fun. For real. They better show up to Tokyo Game Show, bro. Because yeah. otherwise, I, I will, I will start to feel like they're taking the piss a little bit. <laughs> Like, come on, come on, PlayStation. We've got like 40 games in development. I'm still expecting a big showcase oh, at some point. <laughs> so it's a Yakuza spin off. Would make sense. I, I thought it kind of had a Yakuza look to it, that previous game. Um. Hogwarts Legacy, man, it's looking dope. I'm excited about that game. I'm not even a hardcore Harry Potter fan, but I can appreciate a, a good game of ambitious kind of scope when I see one. Well, I'm a fan of the books. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm definitely excited. I enjoyed the books, but I was a lot younger when I read them. I hope the... Uh, the streaming quality is good for you guys. This is the first live stream I've ever done, I think, of a show. <laughs> yeah, I was getting Alan Wake vibes too, Gundam. Big time. Could this be Alan Wake too? Did you say that? Sorry, bro. Yeah, maybe I didn't speak close enough to the mic. Wait, Alan Wake VR? Kind of gives me cyberpunk vibes with the car. Looks like a cyberpunk vehicle. This is nuts. What is this? Ghostbusters, yeah. Another one. After all these years. 
Oh. Now. I don't know. Looks looks interesting. Does have Ghostbusters vibes. I need to see more. Survival Looks like it on rails to me, man. Pacific Drive, the debut game from Ironwood Studio. Hey, not bad for a debut game. Stars, a I'm guessing it's like driving on the soon. run. You have to kind of out out drive a disaster of some kind. Looks Hi everyone. Dope. I'm Hi Ron. Welcome to the stream. Not long ago, we announced our brand new loyalty program called PlayStation hey, Ron. Stars. Good, it's brother. designed to celebrate you, the players. It will be free to join PlayStation Stars. Sure. As a member, sure. you can complete various activities to earn points that can be redeemed for rewards. Digital collectibles are a highlight of the program. These are digital representations of things that PlayStation fans love. Today, I'm pleased to give you a sneak peek at some examples of our digital collectibles. Whether it's a beloved game character or a cherished device from Sony's innovative history, there will always be something new to collect and show off to your friends. And I have more good news. PlayStation Stars will begin to roll out in some regions in Asia starting in late September. It will launch in the Americas and Europe in the weeks that follow. That's it for now. Check PlayStation Blog to learn more about PlayStation Stars. Okay, that was probably a wasted 30 seconds. Yeah. I'm here with Final Fantasy News. Maybe not Final Fantasy, but. Is that Pragmata? Is that Pragmata? No, this can't be Pragmata. No, I refuse to believe no. it. No, no, it's too different. It's okay. <laughs> it was just a wee girl flying around there. I was like, hmm. hey, but I'm getting. I know this sounds weird. I'm getting slight Death Stranding vibes from this. I don't know why. Don't ask me. The open fields. It's it's more like the the movement, but maybe that was too quick for me to say because it's looking far more arcadey than than immersive. But it looks different. <laughs> it looks alright. Yeah, looks like it could be an interesting run. It's like Gundam meets flipping survival sin duality. <laughs> so I'm guessing he's inside a mech that he's controlling a mech from a different planet or something and these next she's a hologram projection to him and he's a mech to her I don't know oh here we go PlayStation exclusives let's go Whoa. hey toolman you good the name is the weakest part. Yeah, I agree, Brian King. Oh. Sorry for the stream issues, guys. Oh, isn't this isn't this the game where the girls jumping around and their asses all on show? No, shit? Project Eve. I hope. Not. Yeah, it is that. It may be. But I doubt it. It's got a similar look, but oh, it is. It is Project Eve. Yeah. I didn't see her. Ah, okay. I seen the ass cheeks, man. <laughs> so misogynistic. I don't care. This is looking pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie. Like, 
you cut open the enemy, then you shoot the insides of the enemy you just cut open. That's rad. <laughs> The music's going for a Nia Automata vibe, a Nia Replicant, in terms of the actual music. You're gonna get in trouble for sexualizing characters! Naughty, naughty. I don't oh, it's know called. What, what's game. it called? St Stella Blade. Stella. Stella Blade. No idea. Oh. oh. What? Stella Blade. Stella Blade. I didn't think it was going to be exclusive, though. That's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> 4K jiggle <laughs> physics. Yeah, oh, no doubt. Toolman's in the chat. What's up, Toolman? Hey. Yeah, Toolman's in. On a. Uh, on the Discord with us. I told him to jump on earlier on. Nice to. Hey, what's going on? Good hey, what's good, buddy? How are you finding the show so far? It's all right. I didn't want to say much before because I jumped in late. Ayo. No. Ayo. No. Ayo. No. Is this? Is this? Um. What's the PS One? Uh. Tenchu. Could this be a tenchu? To the past, those who embrace I, I thought it was Neo 3. And the Ronin. Could be Neo 3. Free of all if it's Neo 3, it's another exclusive. Bro, this is, is looking it? phenomenal. Holy shit. Wow. Assassin's oh. Creed 2, eat your heart oh. out. I will watch over you all. Can you see that shit? Bro, what is this? <laughs> this looks so good. Oh my god. Give me all yes. oh my god. This hey, is what know. I needed. This is what I needed to see. Your time has come. Oh my days! Yeah, off with his head. Japanese Assassin's Creed. As one. Yeah, Japan. it's looking like it. But this is a this is a PS5 exclusive. Rise of the Rome. No. Oh. Oh my so days! Oh. This I looks think. incredible. Oh my oh. god! Oh, that's so sick, guys! Yeah, we need to <laughs> what the hell? Let's go! Experience an era of great change Already and knows. evil. Day oh, freaking so one. Day one, guys. See that next RPG yeah. from Team Team just grabbed that dude and just whoop, snap his neck. Oh, yeah. Hey, one more you got a pistol. Let's go. <laughs> last one. Last last one. But that looked dope. Oh, my days. That was a highlight. <gasps> God of War. Let's go. Oh. Show me Fenrir. Oh no, come on, don't don't make it a controller advertisement. Fuck off. Really? <sighs> Are you trolling? Are you kidding me? That can't be it. Oh, thank goodness for that. Flipping heck. <laughs> I'm getting that controller though. I don't care. Yeah, it's dope. that's gonna go with my Latner edition. That's dope, but this is. I'm not an expert. I don't care. <laughs> I want games. <laughs> not more ways to play the same freaking thing. God killer. What is it you want from me? I was not expecting that to be Tears' voice. You came to find. You don't really want war, do you, Kratos? All that blood on your hands, on your son's hands. I've got goosebumps. What is it you will not tell me. I can't talk about it, but I just need you to trust me. We follow you on every whim. But you don't believe in any of it. And still, I follow. All that matters is that you are safe. But that's not all that matters. Who's keeping you safe? I do not need you to protect me. You sure about that? Pretender, God! 
for the old father! Death can have me. Go! <laughs> Holy shit, this looks incredible. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Trust the stream to go. Oh, sorry. What do you even know of God's book? In your lifetimes, has anyone ever worshipped you? Ever prayed to you? Can you even imagine that kind of love? No! You don't care about anything beyond yourself. Beyond the monster who kills without cause. Oh my god, this looks like a whole different level of scale from the first game. Oh, look at this. Oh my god! Oh. Tears got. Wait, only binds him if you let it. Fenrir's got a girlfriend. No way, man. Look at that. What the hell? Oh Bro. my god. I've got goosebumps. Oh. What? Oh my day, DLC! Oh, got... the, DLC. <laughs> this is just DLC, the axe just hit Milner and st oh. got stuck into Milner. Yeah. Oh my oh. god! Get it, <laughs> guys. Yeah, oh. that game, man. Holy shit, so was getting it. Every hair is standing up on my body right now. On November 9th. Wow. Pubes and all. Wow. Freaking hell. I am I'm so high. It's the best DLC I've ever seen in my life. That is <laughs> absolute bro, that, that that story trailer, I can't wait to rewatch that in 4K. That story that trailer. That controller though. Oh, that shut controller up. Shut up about the controller. I don't want to know about the controller. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about the trailer, man. Oh, get, get out of here with that nonsense controller. Flipping heck. Bro, the wife turned around to me as soon as she's seen it and says, Need. Need. Facts. Yep. Your wife is a, that controller. A, a lady of culture and good taste. Um. So it looks like I'm getting the God of War controller. Holy shit, guys, I'm sorry for the hiccups of the stream. I, I do apologize uh, for that. Um, but damn, that was insane, guys. Yeah. That was amazing. I don't think we're meant to that, war, man. That, that ninja game, Team Ninja game, The Last Ronin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it called, that was incredible. Was it called The Last Ronin? Yeah, The Last Ronin. Man. Oh my wow! That that that, and then the story trailer of God of War looked like it was taking everything to a to a level in terms of storytelling, emotional storytelling, and how it captivates you and the the writing, the dynamic between yeah. Kratos and Atreus, and just amping everything up to freaking fifteen, not just eleven. It's like. That was it's, something else. It's the rise of the Ronin, yeah, rise of the Ronin. Yeah, the rise of the Ronin. Thanks, thanks, Deezy. Thanks, did you uh, see that? Did you see that giant space jellyfish in God of War? Bro, the... it's not even funny. That was insane. The scale was ridiculous. Like, uh, oh, I can't wait, man. That's gonna me... be hard, isn't it? Uh. I mean, I was I was kind of feeling a little bit like disappointed with what I was seeing, but then they showcased this bad boy, and everything just changed. Sony Interactive Entertainment presents, so it's a Sony published title. This is a Sony published title. This is a th this is what I'm talking about, guys. Third party exclusives, where. The industry isn't being bought and consolidated, but the industry is being invested into and being nurtured and growing and getting better and better at After their craft and what they do. Of the Tokugawa's repressive rule, mm -hmm. the black ships of That's what Sony is doing. Who is the team oh, Ninja? Okay. Yeah, so I'm in the house. Oh, <laughs> that's good, Deezy. 
Yeah, going on. Oh, and Tekken as well. Let's not forget Tekken because I don't think it's going to get talked yeah, about much. But I'm a, I'm a big, big fan of Tekken, and to see two of my favorite characters duking out in a new engine was awesome. Yeah, I'm not even going to lie. The, the this one was a pretty good one. I'd give it a B plus overall. Definitely um, a B for me, man. Yeah, it was yeah. a B. Uh, so, it, so I'd give it a B plus too. Your time it's come. Just short of an A minus, but only because the first ten minutes were a little kind of disappointing. <laughs> that controller, though, Wooly. That controller. Sure. I, I saw some stuff. I saw some stuff. I definitely play. Um, like Eve showed up at the last September showcase, and it's coming out next year now under the name of. Uh, Stellar Blade. Um, Give me that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was Project Eve last September when we saw it. So Sony's publishing it. Um, and I called it Project Ass. Project Ass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ass when I first saw it, I, I, when I first saw it, I was like, oh my God, look at the titties. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, that looked amazing, honestly. Um, and then, right? yeah, uh, Team Ninja, Team Ninja was giving me some real Sekiro vibes with that. Bro, so. it's like oh, it's got the perfect blend map. of Sekiro meets Ghost of Tsushima, with a little bit yeah, of like Tenchu thrown in. Like it's got this. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's really it's really fantastic. Um, this is what I'm talking about. Game. It is a 2024 game, so you know what? I am happy Sony's money heading these games. I'm happy they're money heading these games. Like, eat your fucking heart out, guys. Yeah, they this are publishing this. Buy. They're publishing this. this is what you, yeah, this is what you buy consoles for, not just for the multiplat games that are available for everybody, but money had the fuck some of these games as well, man. Like, look new IP. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look! Oh, it's so... It's like got Assassin's Creed meets Tenchu it meets like a, a little bit great. of Neo with it's a really Sekiro. Stylish, I yeah, see a bit of Ico in there. Uh, well, more Shadow of the Colossus. With that, a little bit of Assassin's ride. Creed 2 with that with the glider. It kind of gives me yeah. Assassin's Creed 2 vibes, you know? Um, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're they're really really Oh, guys. That. Like, oh. uh, this was a pretty good show. Um, yeah, that, this is really excited. Yeah, it was a pretty decent show. Um, yeah, day freaking one. Um, so, do you think they're going to announce a showcase here pretty soon? Then? Yeah, you might. Um, I'd say if we get a showcase, it'll be October. Um, they've really started to peel back some of the games that are coming next month, next year. So we know we now have um, to add to that. We have Final Fantasy. We have Forspoken. We have well, we have two Final Fantasy games next year. We have Forspoken. Um, we now have Stellar Blade um, and. Tekken is also coming next year as well, so I don't know if that's exclusive or not. Um, but yeah, this 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 is a this they're starting to coalesce um, plenty of third party games to help carry this carry the system. So we'll see what they have in the first party department besides Spider Man and The Last of Us uh, factions. I reckon that we'd get um I reckon that we're gonna get something in October. Um, or November. You think, it'll, you think it'll be that late? It might. It might. It might. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, I know they've been changing it up here the last three years or so with everything going on. It might. So. It, it might. Um, because the, there was a game that I thought was going to be a part of the showcase, was going to be a part of this, which didn't show up, which I saw um, back in... I saw this back in, um, what was it? I saw a game back in August, which was um, leaked and then uh, taken off and copywritten because, you know, so it was, um, 
Hell Divers 2. Mm-hmm. And um, that's very much a, that's very much official because uh, the Arrowhead Games took that off. Um, so I imagine, um, and that trailer was already prepared with the PlayStation uh, Studios logo and everything. So um, it's due. You know, those kind of trailers and stuff like that aren't necessarily prepared months in advance, but like uh, I'd say maybe a couple of weeks out once they know that they're going to be a part of a showcase. So something's coming up within the next six or so weeks. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I think before too long we're going to hear about something. So, like, yes, bro. October. I um you think they're going to... oh sorry boy go ahead. No, I I was just going to say I um uh, I think that God of War trailer it left me it left me slightly emotional like the the I had goosebumps from head to toe yeah. um because of the the way the story is showing itself to um to grow God. the relationship between Kratos and his son forward to push that forward to add even more depth to the storytelling i wasn't expecting tia to have the voice that he has i was expecting it to be deep like kratos but um this this particular bit where kratos and tia uh hold like pop buddy up was great to see like i'm I'm getting vibes that he's, he's going to um kind of grow a friendship with Tia similar to the one that he had with his friend who was killed whose tattoos he 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 whose birth whose mark birthmark he had tattooed onto his skin in memory of him um what's his name I can't remember his original friend um somebody in the chat might know um do you remember that DZ who Kratos's friend was who who was killed who he who he loved like a brother Mm-mm. Oh, that's all the way back in the yeah original. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm having a. F- he's never, he's never grown close to, uh, like a another, uh, like an like another man, in in kind of a spirit of brotherhood. Since then, like he's every he's just killed them all, <laughs> you know. But this gives me vibes that Kratos and Tia. There isn't like a weird betrayal happening, and like there's a friendship, a strong friendship that's being forged there, which would be amazing. Now, I couldn't quite understand if these wolves. Sorry, uh, I do apologize, Toolman. You were going to say something, and I just. Fenrir. Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. I was away. just going to say, I, I can't remember if these wool, these two wolves, are Fenra and his partner, his spouse, or whether they're the wolves, like they're they're different wolves, they're giant wolves. Um, they're because Fenrir, Fenrir, one of them is Fenrir, and the other is the um, I forget the last the other name, but they're uh, they're oh, they're attracted kids. They're Atreus's kid. Yeah, yeah, from the future. I mm-hmm. I remember actually. Um, Fenrir, hold on, Fenrir, and uh, Fen Fenris Fenris. Uh, Fe- Fenris are. Oh no, no, Fenris is Fenrir. I'm trying to think what the female name Wolf was. Um. I can't remember. It, I um, I know that um, what's his name? Captain Cuba speaks of them. Um, maybe Skull or Hattie. Can't quite remember. Anyway, but yeah, the um, like this story trailer, man. This this is showing God of War to be. An adventure even more epic than the first. I can't get my head around it. I'm so impressed with what we've seen. Um, 
Jesus says, bro, this was insane. Um, PlayStation did a good job, Dawn says. I agree. Thought the detail in the facial expressions in all the games was a step up in this show. I can't talk about it, but I just need you to trust me. We follow your every whim. Yeah, this was good. Yeah. It's like Kratos says, I follow you everywhere you go. And he says, you don't believe any of it. And he says, and still I follow. So, like, it's showing kind of this dynamic change between Kratos and Atreus, where Atreus is thinking very independently, and Kratos mm -hmm. is humbling himself uh, in, 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 a, in an attempt to connect with his son. And he's trying his freaking hardest to... Oh. It's it, like I said. I think they're um, they're doing things to subvert our um, subvert our expectations, right? Mm -hmm. Because this this one this game is of course treading the storyline of the end of the world via the North mythology, right? right? So everybody who's read um, who's read the Norse Norse mythology and everything knows that Ragnarok and is the end of everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, we know Kratos has learned, Kratos has learned um, from the, uh, you know, the last, the, the fleeting moments of um, when, he, when they were in Jotunheim uh, with the giants. Um, that he saw the last tablet, and the tablet showed, um, you know, his son killing him with snakes. Um, so I've, everything was sort of a prophecy. So a lot of this is him looking, being unsure of what his future is going to be because he's seen that everything has been written, and this was the journey they were going to go, go on, and. It's all about preventing a war with the Asgardians and also trying to avoid the fate of his son and him becoming different people and him ultimately losing his life. And so, like, there's there's a whole bunch of these uh, things that we're going to have to learn and whatnot. And their dichotomy is... Um, their dichotomy that they're experiencing now is uh, is pretty telling because um, on one hand, Kratos is the father and everything, and he's been raising his son, but now he can actually see that his son is starting to take things into his own hands um, mm -hmm. and become this self-sufficient man. I think some of the some of the um, the things that he's learned, uh, what you know. What Atreus said was like, um, what was it? He was just like, uh, I'm trying to protect you and everything. And you say that and, you know, all these things. I think he's learned all that from when he meets Ang Angerboda, um, you know. So it's going to be, it's, there's, there's so much about this game that's just, tantalizing and um we're really gonna get a wild fucking ride and I, I i can't fucking wait the writers have done i'm watching the fucking trailer again yeah, right now me too i'm just pausing it i'm just playing it and pausing it so people can see these amazing up close screenshots in 4k uh, even though the stream's in 1440p you, you hopefully the quality is still there for you to see. But another thing I've noticed is these visuals, man, these cutscene visuals, they're, they're obviously real-time rendered in-game. Um, yeah. And the, it's a step up in so many ways because 2018 is showing its age now. It's starting to show its age in the character models and the way that the, the skin is rendered. But just look at this. Flipping it, that's a screenshot and a half. Um this I just I just want how do I get rid of this bar so the whole thing shows I don't know um but I mean the the level of detail on Kratos um his face the lighting he's got greater muscle mass in this as well the way the shadows are interact with his muscles and 
Atreus just, you know, they've done an amazing job at growing the lad up. Um, lots of subtle eye movements as well, like when he was with his bow, with his bow and arrow, and Kratos was behind him, and he was looking left, right, and then behind him at at, at his dad. Um, and this, the deb- look at the debris, the particle yeah. effects in the background of the asteroid belt, um, of this dimension. This looks like I don't know where this could be. This this celestial re- realm that they're in. Oh, there was supposed to be like a special type of like Valkyrie or something there. Or? Yeah, must be. <laughs> the Rainbow Road or whatever it's called, yeah. And the detail in these enemies as well, man. Like, this looks like a finisher. Um, and this guy, flipping hack. This monstrous oh. rhino looking giant kind of wyvern. This type of. Oh, man. <laughs> it's kind of funny it goes back to the first game where when you first watched the in 2016 the reveal of God of War 2018 when he tells him to shoot with the arrow and he shoots him in the arm or whatever yeah. here you know he doesn't hesitate and he shoots the thing in the head when he's holding it so yeah that's kind of a little <laughs> and he shoots the freaking sun and it turns into the moon <laughs> go on go on retro say that again I was saying he disrespected that lizard thing man he literally pulled him by his tongue it's ridiculous. <laughs> Bro, let's go back to... Look at that. Flipping heck. What's another one he's grabbing? And he's grabbing him by his tongue? It's amazing. Like, Kratos was carrying uh, what looked like to be a woman, uh, saving a woman through the woods. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. From... Uh, they were in the elves. The, um, they were in Alfheim again. Yeah, looks like it. How many realms did we visit in the first in Nine, 2018? N- oh, uh, no, we, seven. Visited, we visited four. We, we, visit, we visited four or five. Like this, there was Helheim, Jotunheim. We Hel- did Helheim. We had Helheim, Jotunheim. We had, well, actually, Niflheim. actually, it was. Yeah, we had Niflheim. It was, Niflheim. Four, five, it wasn't all of them. It wasn't all nine realms. No, there was some I think, locked I think up. It, I think it was six out of the three nine. Of them, three of them, yeah, three of them were three of them were locked off. Um, the so, realm of the so Asgard was locked. Asgard was look locked this, off. Man. Look at this money shot look right here. That, that is the yeah. money shot. Flipping it. That is the money shot right there. That is amazing. Um, guys, I'm hyped for this. But yeah, this bit where he's running through, what's it called again? The land of the the fairies, <laughs> Alfheim, the light, land of the light. Alfheim. Alf, 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 I actually Alf. think that's Tia. Um, he's carrying, bro. You think that's who? land of the elves? I think it's Tia. Do you reckon? Do you think that's Tia? I think so. Yeah, Tia's go too, back. Tia is too big. To be that. Oh, oh, that that was a woman he was carrying. Are you sure? Look again. Yeah, yeah it's a woman. It's Look. A woman. Look it's a that. woman. That's definitely a woman with a ponytail, and it's not wearing Tia's armor at all. Wait. All right. Okay. I'll Maybe that's that girl with the uh, that you think is. Um... Unless it's a really, like, unless it's a. No, you're right. A, no, you're right. You're just gonna let see it now. You're right. But this bit where. It, uh, Atreus hits the eclipse and then That's... the wolf next to him flies off into the sky <laughs> Fen- 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 have a giant space jellyfish looks awesome and it it's chasing the sun I mean, it's just... so it's but just that's the story reality. it chases the sun that's the story of what? isn't, isn't that the story of that wolf? Does he not chase the sun or something like that? Or have know. something to do with it? I, I'm not I'm not read up enough to know that. And that jellyfish, man. Flipping it. <laughs> oh, man. That's that so good. How would you... How would you uh, honestly, <laughs> I'm, asking, I'm asking real questions. Let's ask, the, let's ask the viewers. 
So how many, so people in the comments, how would you rate today's show on a scale of today, both of today's shows? So Nintendo Direct and uh, State of Play, how would you rate them? And then which would you say was better? And I want your honest opinion. Sound off in the comments. Big facts. Um, I, le I left a poll. Uh, I haven't cleared the poll yet. The poll's still active. Um, hold on now. But look at this. The axe, the Leviathan axe, hits Milne, and they both collide. That's just mm -hmm. awesome, man. Like, damn. That is amazing. Yeah, that, <laughs> bro, that, fight, that fight is going to have me wetter than a raincoat. <laughs> bro, it, the axe sticks into Milne. It sticks into it, and, like, just... Both of those... Both of those act, both of those weapons come back to each other. So it's like, oh, bro. It's so Imagine when you get his hammer though, and Thor, if you can combo those two weapons, bro. Go on, go on, retro. I'm saying, imagine when you beat his ass and you steal his weapon off his dead ass. Imagine if they let you combo oh. those two weapons. If you can use, if you can use Milner, that would be <laughs> something else. Imagine if you can use them both together. Yeah. Guys, what if, what if Atreus gets Milner or something? Mm. I want to stab. He's going to traitor us. I want to stab him early in the game. He needs to be ended before he ends so, us. So here's the results of the poll, which we had. Uh, how would you rate the show? Sixty-eight percent out of twenty-two votes. So more than 12 people voted, so around 13 or 14 people voted amazing. Uh, about four or five people, uh, maybe six, voted more than acceptable. And others voted D, left a lot to be uh, desired. Um, maybe one or two people voted that. Um, for me, it was more than acceptable. And it was more than yeah, acceptable. That's about, that's about where I was at yeah, for me. Because, more than acceptable. Because um, that Team Ninja game, right, right, Rise of the Ronin, I'm forever going to butcher this name. What the hell is it? Rise of the, Rise of the Ronin. Yeah, Rise of the Ronin. Um, that just got, that got me excited big time. Um, Tekken 8 was really good. Tekken 8. Too. Oh, yeah, flipping heck. Imagine forgetting that. Tekken 8. Yeah, Holy shit. Know, this, fantastic. Show, this show was yeah. kind of like uh, it was almost kind of like uh, the showcase that they did last year, except you know where you had the the middle part of all the third parties, and then you got to the last four where it was all first party, where it was kind of like mm -hmm. blah. You know, first, the first one that opened up that was like really big, and then everything in the middle was junk more or less, and then you got to the end, it was like damn when they showed off Ragnarok and. Wolverine and all that. That's kind of the way yeah. this one just... Yeah, it kind, of, it kind of carried the same cadence, started off with some bangers. Um, like, it was much like uh, this show, like, I, they, their, uh, their state of plays are getting a lot better um, because the one that they showed over during the E3 period this year was kind of on the same level. Like you had banger, you had banger uh, stuff like Forspoken was in there. You had Resident Evil Four remake mm -hmm. unveiled in there. You had you had Final Fantasy, you had Final yeah. Fantasy Sixteen um, was finally shown off, and it was a lengthy trailer in there. Um, so you know they had some pretty they've they've had some pretty strong stuff in there um, in these showcases and whatnot. So like. Um, the state of plays are getting better. Um, this was 10 games. They were laser focused on what they were going to show off. And, um, you know, I, I like that they set the cadence and whatnot. This was, you know, it was 20 minutes. Uh, it was a 20 minute showcase. Um, you'd imagine, you would imagine, um, their, their, their actual PlayStation showcase, which, which tends to be about forty to forty minutes to an hour, um, you know, it's going to be of a similar caliber or even better um, because mm -hmm. it'll actually 
because the back end of it will f- will focus on first party stuff. Um, but this was good. Like I said, this this mm-hmm. show was this show wasn't bad. Um, the VR stuff was okay. The Star Wars thing, anyway, was pretty looked pretty good. Um, the second VR game was just blah. Um, PSVR yeah. then, didn't didn't do itself any favors with that showcase. Like I don't think Sony did PSVR two any favors with that showcase. They were you know PSVR two for me is supposed to be the next generation of VR gaming, and what they showed was it felt very claustrophobic and very kind of um, just extremely niche. Um, nothing. It's it's a a low poly board game with figurines except you're in the board game because it's vr and it's like i don't want vr to be a gimmick thrown into a game i want vr to be an experience you know and that just didn't strike me as an experience but i'm not i'm not hating here i know i know sony are taking vr to, to extremely seriously go figure it's a piece of hardware that you know costs a costs a dime and a half to make and you know they want it to do well and take the world by storm um and obviously they're going to appeal to the casual market as well as the hardcore market and i think the more we see the next the more we see of horizon call of the mountain will kind of be be something that i'm i'm looking forward to seeing but i think kind of interactivity with the world is where vr could really push push limits and push boundaries like the problem with half-life alex for me is i saw a pipe i pick up a pipe but i can't hit enemies with it because it weighs nothing there's no weight to it and i'm thinking if they could figure out how to solve that issue uh then i think vr 2.0 has my name all over it um but yeah, uh, Stellar Blade. I, I, I'm pretty happy with that game. How that game's looking? Very Bayonetta esque, with a you know Devil May Cry. Very much. It's very much Bayon. I thought when it was first announced, I was like, "Oh shit, next gen mm. Bayonetta. Let's go, let's go, let's go." And then they were like Project Eve. I was like, "Okay." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Okay." And um, but now, yeah, Stellar Blade looks awesome. I can't wait for it. Um, right up my alley um i was hoping to see pragmata and show up yeah i'm good about that but i'm relieved that that mech game wasn't pragmata i think they're saving it i think they're saving it for for the playstation showcase mm-hmm. but that could be the only thing because if it doesn't show up this week in tokyo <clears throat> game show then it's definitely going to be for this the, the the state of play because that's it that's the 2023 game for sure Big um, facts. Yeah. Um, also, the uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, ah, shit, losing my train of thought here. Um, that that oh yeah, that mech that mech game that they showed, um, where you kind Unduality. of traveling with this girl. Um, Sinduality. That's the one. Sinduality. Like that name, bro. Like these names are getting silly now. But but. I, I'm actually intrigued. That game is not a write-off. It looks pretty good. Um, it it's, looks it's different. It's by the same people who made Scarlet Nexus, the same development okay. team from Namco Bandai that made Scarlet Nexus. Oh, okay. so I need to get back into yeah. that game. I've only played like an hour of it, and I put it down, and I'm just terrible, terrible with that. I'm just terrible with JRPGs in general. I loved every second of what I played of um, of Judgment. I love it. But I just haven't got back to it. I love this clip here, this scene here. Just look at this, guys. Mm-hmm. Hold on, let me play it in slow motion. Um, look at these crates falling, crashing around. Like there's some proper high-end stuff going on here on in this Project Eve. The way the hair moves as she's running, the way the the, the, how fluid the combat is and i just love this right check this out project eve is it has legs bro it's flexing look how she cuts the enemy open vertically 
right? Yeah, that's a, that's an Unreal mm. Five Engine game too, guys. So yeah, so she um, cuts she cuts the en- out, yeah. enemy open vertically and then shoots the enemy in the bit where she cut him open. That's and it's just... also made by it's also made by a Korean studio. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's got it's very Korean. I, I love it. it. It's definitely it definitely looks yeah, like a good time. Crazy. It's pretty. I like this one the first time we've seen it. Yeah, I wasn't sold on it the first time I saw it, but now I'm looking very like, I'm. It's looking very, very polished and very, very good. Um, it's got almost Metal Gear vibes to it as well. Like it's, it's giving me Metal Gear Rising Revengeance vibes in terms of, like, the world design and the, the com like the way the combat flows. I don't know. Like, it's just giving me kind of almost. Um, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Um, Them physics, no, bro. Everyone else know it in the physics, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's the kind t- of got like this pseudo t- futuristic. T- 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 <laughs> go on, go on, Tev. No, no, I was saying. Uh, see, um, retro brought up. Uh, retro brought up the physics, and I was like, "Yeah, man, the titties was bouncing." <laughs> Let's see. I'm glad I'm not the only person I mean, I mean, looks good, so, bro. So they freaking should. I mean, she's a sexy, powerful, what female protagonist? If she's got, if she's got uh, a rack, then you know it would it would be strange. <laughs> it would be strange for them not to have physics. I, I just think, you know, they're, they're doing them bad boys justice. And so, <laughs> and, you know, hats off to them and respect to them. I think the whole article saying she's got an unrealistic figure is very, yeah, is, it's very silly. It's a very silly argument to make because she, she hasn't got an unrealistic figure. Women have that figure, you know, Bro, it's, did it's you ever see any of that figure in your life? Pardon? Did you ever see any of that shit written about Dead or Alive? You could literally set your age to 100 in that to make the titties bounce more. <laughs> you could say, honestly, I'm not even joking, Dead or Alive, you set your age to 100. So and toxic. Stop being so <laughs> toxic, you man. Retro, you, retro, you know you got everybody in the chat sitting there writing notes down. Okay, he said to but put it at this. All right, dead or Alive, set your age to 100. And now bounce like <laughs> does uh, yeah yeah go ahead try it out. D D E uh, asked maybe I missed it. How many out of ten title are are a buy woolly? So Project Eve Tekken Eight looks phenomenal. Uh, I'm not a huge fighting game uh, junkie, but I can imagine a lot of fighting game junkies are creaming themselves over Tekken Eight. Right now, I certainly uh, did. Project Project Eve looks phenomenal. God of War Ragnarok is a no-brainer, one hundred percent. That Team Ninja game, uh, Rise of the Ronin, Ronin, looks incredible. That really, really excites me. Um, and there's one other game that was shown. Uh, there's a, there's a. I want to wait and see more, but it, it's intrigued me. There's this game called Sin, Sin. Oh, what's it called? Sin. Duality. Sin duality. And there's this kind of girl and mech. Um, and it looks intriguing, bro. It looks like it's got a pretty unique play loop. And um, I'm intrigued by it. Um, I'm going to type in the trailer now. Uh, but I think the steal of the show for me was the God of War story trailer, but very, very closely followed by um, the Rise of the Ronin. Rise of the Ronin. That Rise of the Ronin. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! That that is wow. I was not expecting that. It's a new IP that we hadn't heard of before. And you know what, guys? I just want to rant here a little bit whilst you look at Sinduality footage. Um, this is what. Sony does so well, and people just, if anything, like, I, I saw one absolute plonker just the other day on Twitter saying it's its the lesser evil, 
and I can't believe he, he's even calling it that. And you know, whilst excusing like the acquisition of Activision Blizzard and Bethesda in the space of two years, but regardless, Sony here are creating Sony published titles, funding the development of Sony games through third party developers, and as well as timed exclusives which are not sony published but they're still funded by sony and they're still third party developers right so you've got second party and third party titles they're not buying the industry they're supporting the industry and they're then they're nurturing and fostering growth in the industry by funding these developers to improve their skills working on these ambitious projects they otherwise wouldn't have had the budget and the funding to do probably if sony hadn't have funded them somebody else would have funded them but it probably would have been a different idea in a different game who knows regardless the point is this they're not buying the industry here and when the, these kind of deals are, are what makes the industry grow and get better and thrive right it's and and it's people who complain about it it, it, to me, it baffles my head. It's like, did you not? Did you not like the 360 era? Was that a bad Xbox era? And it's like, who in the right mind would say 360 era was bad? It was the very best of Xbox, right? Because they were doing exactly that. They were funding yeah. incredible third and second party, either timed or permanent exclusives. They weren't mm-hmm. buying the whole freaking industry. Like, and so they haven't changed the formula like, here. Every- like everybody everybody remembers how fucking beloved the mass effect series was right mass effect one and two were exclusive to um xbox 360 for a while before they brought that before they brought all three of them over to playstation Mm -hmm. um so you know um and those were those were those were games microsoft went and funded themselves and bought rights to just like titanfall just like Titanfall um, and Dead Rising Three, and you know Gears all the War. Games. yeah, Gears of War. So like that whole that whole era, um, that whole era was was a good era for Microsoft. And people people love to say, oh, the Sony's money hunting, but like this is what you buy your whole fucking console for, right? Like the, these mm. kind of exclusives, these kind of experiences. So yeah, man. Mm. I just think, you know, they're not trying to change change or buy the industry. They're trying to they're trying to capitalize off the industry and through mutual beneficial business. And that that to me, this is what it's about. And this is why I love what PlayStation is doing is they're they're just doing what has always worked and people who try to peddle and preach that times have changed are trying to peddle and preach an inferior an inferior uh vastly more inferior and vastly more disruptive and aggressive and damaging um form of business that in my opinion is just so it's just it just to me it's irrational and it just doesn't make any sense that you, why you would why you would want that why celebrate that and then sh- and shit on this it makes no sense to me and it's what i'm seeing a lot of people doing it and i've come to the kind of the realization that i'm losing patience to entertain these sort of narratives now like people who go on and on and on about you know about evil sony you know, money hatting, third party exclusives, completely, ir- completely disregarding any context, not entertaining any context, because it, like for example, Sony actually funds those games to be developed in the first place. They have a say in, you know, in 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 the game, uh, if it's second party, and the fact that these developers, if it's third party exclusive, timed exclusive. Or even in some cases a full time exclusive, but it's it's part of the contract. These developers keep the IP. And David Faulkner made a great point, shout out to him, 
panel member David Faulkner in the chat, uh, he's not here tonight, but he's probably listening in. He said that, you know, what's better for the industry? Uh, Developers keeping their IP or having that or losing rights to their IP? Well, who's doing that on a far more egregious level? Some 50 IPs now belong to Microsoft in the last two years that previously didn't. And it's like... Uh, what what what's better for the industry here um and i'm just losing patience guys i'm losing patience to entertain the narratives that i see you know shout out to tim dog it's called tim dog uh, you know and even randall thor R- randall thor was at it again with his he, he was losing his shit just yesterday over jim ryan's we believe in generations uh quote what the fuck is can't read man Bro, for real, like, we- like they can't read, and they seem to only be able to read one paragraph or one sentence of one paragraph of a whole fucking interview. It annoys me so much. Sorry, it it fucking annoys me. <laughs> it really grinds my gears, man. I love like, that. It's like Shout read the book one day, read. Yeah, that goes out to all of them motherfuckers that are using that as some sort of fucking argument. It only makes sense. In your little Xbox client world, when you cut out bits of sentences and glue other bits together, it's ridiculous. I fucking hate that. Sorry, I'm gonna no, shut up again. Facts. <laughs> Honestly, I find I find it insufferable, man. Like, uh, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it all it would take was a little bit of reading onwards to realize that Jim, within the same within the same conversation, just two lines down, promised to continue to support. PlayStation 4 owners. Bro, um, do you know where my head goes from there? My head goes from there to questioning it. Like, these are people that can read and write and speak. Like, surely they're not this naive or stupid or incapable of actually understanding what this interviewer said. So then it makes me wonder, well, they're clearly doing it on purpose then mm-hmm. for likes and clicks. And that's, and I'm thinking, that's what baffles you're, me. You're, you're willing to sell your word and your integrity on a few likes and clicks by some rabid fanboys. That's, that's just not for me. Man. I just want to give a quick shout out to Saltiest Gaming in the Thank chat. You. What's good, my brother? Also, Doomsays Network, shout out to you. Salty, bro, uh, I just want to say thank you, man. You gave this show a shout out um, on on your show just uh, like half an hour ago. And I just want you to know I really Hello. appreciate it. I really appreciate and love you, brother. And uh, for those who don't know, Saltiest Gaming really encouraged me to start my own podcast. Uh, I told him I'd been wanting to do one for a while, and I told him about it. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have started the Worldwide Company of Gamers. And now look at us. Like, it, he sat through down with me for four hours, five hours, showed me how to use OBS, this complicated mess. I'll show you a full screenshot. <laughs> Um, bottom right of the screen, show you know, he he showed me how to use OBS. He he showed me how to make a decent looking uh, presentation and uh, shortcuts on how to kind of make the the YouTube chat transparent so it looks nicer and more flush against the backdrop. He he gave me loads of tips. He helped me when I was panicking through my first few episodes he really kind of supported me gave me a lot of encouragement Mm -hmm. and he's just a real friend man like i wouldn't have i wouldn't have this we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him uh as well as Mm -hmm. obviously the panel um and i just wanted to say bro i I appreciate you and I, i love you to bits bro so thank you and now look at us man i mean we're the official podcast of icon era it feels amazing to say that. We're the official freaking podcast of Icon Era. There we are. Yeah, big up to Salty, man. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. You I wouldn't like have created one of my favourite podcasts that I'm now part of. Mad. Somehow, somehow, I don't know how, <laughs> but somehow I've ended up part of it also. Yeah, shout out to you, man. Big facts. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I just wanted, I just wanted hey, to get that, boy. get that off my chest. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Sorry, guys. I'm so- sorry, I'm soppy and emotional. <laughs> guys, the uh, Tekken Eight was actually running on PlayStation. That was actually pre-alpha footage yeah. on yeah. PS5. 
I can't believe it, man. Mm. That was oh, that, that looks, looks insane. Stunning. It does. It looks stunning. I um, love the way they really worked with that clock camera that they've been doing. They kind of tried it with Tekken Seven. Mm. It's where in the middle of the move they'll move the camera about, and they look like they've really nailed it in this one. Yeah, man. He said all the camera. All uh, Harada is like saying all the character models, backgrounds, and effects. Are the same ones that are used in game. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, bro, yeah. this yeah, is crazy. It's not, pre- it's not pre-rendered so, and it's running at sixty frames per second. These whole um, tornadoes and this whole backdrop is not pre-rendered. Oh, no, everything. Oh, is really, just yeah, storm and everything. Can, it's actually yeah, the going rain. Up. The rain running down his face. The fi- flame yeah. and particle effects in the background. Everything is all oh. one hundred. <laughs> What? From live gameplay, I'm reading it right now in the. Um, I'm reading it right now from the PlayStation really? blog. It's Bro! insane. So, so graphics are than the CGI videos. It's 60 FPS because I'm playing it at half speed right now. I'm playing it at 0.5 times speed. Look how smooth that bad boy is. Oh my days. Oh, these man. When- oh, yeah, did you see that? Did you see that where he jumped over his kick and then kicked him back? That was look at that yeah. slow motion. Wait, he just. But you know those camera Bam. cuts I was talking that- about, bro. They uh, said bro. that was gameplay. That was gameplay. Yeah. Are you shitting me? So they they're implementing camera cuts um, into the gameplay, real time yeah. camera cuts. Yeah, That's they- what I just tried yeah. telling you. A retro. Dude, so you, you need to realize something. When you speak, you I need a translator, right? I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't <laughs> understand you. You can say there are camera cuts in game, and I won't understand that until DZ says there are camera cuts in game. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just giving you shit, bro. I'm just giving you shit. No, but for I'm real, one. that's incredible. Right. Stop posting pictures to send me. You carry on this crap. <laughs> <laughs> no but for real yeah, yeah you know it's crazy. all love brother it's all love yeah man um it's on the playstation blog right now um and they're saying that they may even when the game finally comes out next year there'll be uh something that might change but for the most part this is this is what's in the game right now mm-hmm. it looks it mm. looks incredible so, shout, shout out to Brian King Bro. in the chat, man. It, Brian's the founder of Icon Area, if I believe, if I'm, if I'm right in saying yeah. that. Um, he, he goes by a different name on Twitter, so I, I get confused. But I've just put the pieces together. Holy shit, Brian King, you're the Icon Era founder. I'm, I'm an idiot, bro. I'm, I'm, try- <laughs> I'm a freaking idiot. Honestly, how am I running a podcast for real? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, tool man. You up, bro? Oh, it's it's kind of off this. What you were talking about when Jim Ryan's comment came out. I don't mean to take away from Tech and Eight, but I was been trying to say this, and I was letting you guys finish up. So, over this last week since that came out, I have, which I watch anyway through the week. I watch some Xbox podcast, and I, I shit you not, this is. God honest truth, I'm not making anything up. I have watched multiple ones this week, and since Jim Ryan, his statement, you know, and everything, and and I have either seen in the chats, or I have seen, or I have heard from one of the panel members say in multiples of these podcasts, I've heard up to four people either text or say live that they are done with PlayStation, and they sold their PS5. What? They And one of them even said they sold their PS4 Pro that their kids used that want it in the house anymore. They can just play the Series S or whatever. And I'm like, what? Well, that's extreme. This, I mean, this is, this is what I've been hearing this last week. They, how hard was it to get a PS5? Some people got it day one. Me, I didn't get mine till right before Thanksgiving last year. And we got my sons about a couple months before that. So it took us, you know, a year and a half before we got ours. And to turn around and to sell it like that? Make it make sense, that? Make it make sense. That's crazy to me. I mean, like, 
I get my kids what they want just because I'm more of a PlayStation fan. That like I've got my my youngest son. He wanted a Series S, so he got a Series S. My oldest son mm-hmm. wanted a Xbox Series X, so he got a Series X. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I would never like yeah. force my kids to have a certain console or even take away something I've already given them as a present. It's that's kind of fucked up. Mm-hmm. It isn't not kind of it, fucked up. It is no, fucked up. Hey, it's disgusting. You're right. I'm just being polite. That's that's fucking disgusting. I would never. I wouldn't. First of all, I wouldn't act like that with my pr- shit I buy. I just wouldn't. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't like take away from my kids just because I'm angry at some corporation that doesn't know me. Way we got Folky mm-hmm. in the house, my dude, yeah. my brother. Me, bro. yeah, there he, he, he was in here earlier, and then he jumped out because he wasn't connected. I think. Ah oh, shit. I really hope his mic works. Folky, sort it out, brother. Uh, we need we uh, need to hear your thoughts. But man, look at the, again. Mm. Rise Rise of the Ronin was a real highlight for me. Um, I'm only more hyped for God of War Ragnarok now. Like the the small snippets of gameplay that they kept showing of thought of God of War Ragnarok. It it wasn't it wasn't kind of like getting me more excited because it was just kind of it all looked kind of. It just there were looked... slow somber moments, right? Yeah, they exactly. Were just it was showing, just like... There were the slow somber moments where they were trying to show off and detail some of the things that they were going to do about its combat, and it was like a few snippets mid up. You know, they said from Game Informer that they have four. What was it? They had four about four minutes total of God of War footage, but um, this was this was a proper story. Yeah, trailer. And it gave you all. It gave you some of the emotional beats that you're going to experience. The kind of thing that you that, you, that, um, that you crave from a PlayStation first party uh, cinematic game, like what they do. So, um, yeah, man, this was good. I'm mm-hmm. watching the fucking trailer again right now. Yeah. And, oh, my days. Yeah, like God of War Ragnarok trailer was the trailer I needed. At the at the perfect time because it's only deepened my hype, and anticipation and excitement for that incredible looking like it looks like everything, God of War twenty eighteen could have been, and that was an incredible game, but, you know this is looking like a whole level above, like a whole step up, and I have no doubt that God of War Ragnarok will be in the top three contenders for game of the year. I'm just saying that now, like um, it's pure conjecture, but looking at the the story um, beats and the, the, the gameplay segments kind of shown in and the scale shown in the trailer just released. It, it looks like something I haven't seen to that scale before. Um, and this rise of the Ronin, just look at that, man. That is that gives me serious Assassin's Creed two vibes with Leonardo's uh, flight contraption that he created, um, mm. and this just looks like it looks like it's recapturing the magic of that era. I don't know why, but with modern quality of life improvements and with combat, that looks incredible. I'm so excited for this game. Um, it's it doesn't look like another stagnant open world game. It looks unique and full of. Well, my game of the year is not even yet fucking looking, so I'm gonna be voting God of War like more than yeah, likely. I love it, but like as I was saying before, right? I, I had you know that um, flipping Randolph Four kind of complaining about Jim Ryan's statements. About we believe in generations, and I just thought, just just stop for a minute and think, right? Since since the release of the PS5 and Xbox Series X, what current gen only games has Xbox provided you? It's provided you with Forza Horizon Five and Halo Infinite. Forza Horizon Five being a cross gen title, as well as Halo Infinite, and both games having a next gen, I quote, a next gen upgrade being little more than a frame rate boost and maybe a resolution boost, but not always. Like an Xbox One X plays Forza Horizon 5 at the same resolution as a Series X, 
just ha half the frame rate. So uh, with no no enhancements, but during a shortage, a supply shortage, Jim Ryan has, pr well, PlayStation have provided us with Ratchet and Clank, Returnal, The Last of Us Remake, Demon Souls, right? Next gen only or current gen only titles, and cross gen games with significant next gen upgrades, including mm -hmm. f full on ray tracing. 40 hertz 120 hertz modes looking at horizon forbidden west and and miles morales they scratch that itch for ps4 oh. gamers still keeping them engaged and still appreciating them as a player base and making them feel like they're not fully left out i saw people crying with happiness over horizon forbidden west on the ps4 they could not believe what they were seeing on a ps4 it looked that good i'm thinking to myself these are cross-gen titles that not only have next gen significant upgrades for next gen console owners, but they also look and play incredible for cur for previous gen own owners who haven't yet been able to get their hands on the next gen console because of supply shortage. And you have the audacity, you have the audacity to moan and bitch and complain about Sony and Jim Ryan's promise to both honour the PS4 community and continue to support their console whilst also believing in generations and providing current gen only experiences for PS5. Whilst you have had nothing in two years since the release of the Series X and oh, Series S. Do you, know, do you know Jim Ryan's promise wasn't even next gen only games? It was features. Mm -hmm. It was he believed that there should be features available to their, play, their players on next gen systems. He never said they had to be exclusive. Yeah. He was just talking about features and stuff. Do you know what I mean? They ran with the whole, oh, well, the games have to be next-gen it's only. Dis to it's disingenuous, bro. And, you know, and on yeah. top of that, if it, ain't, if it ain't about that, it's about, oh, evil Sony flipping, supporting third-party developers by not buying them, but <laughs> funding yeah. the development of games from them and keeping them as either timed or permanent platform exclusives. And I'm thinking to myself... Where are your priorities as a gamer? Because right now you don't sound like a gamer. You just sound Bro, like a fanboy. Riskit had himself convinced that marketing deals with MS work differently to other companies. You know what I mean? When you play, <laughs> play for exclusive marketing, you know what I mean? It's only Sony that demand that they actually be exclusive. MS don't stipulate. Any and I'm like, are you listening to what you're saying? You're basically telling me Microsoft is giving developers money for exclusivity without the exclusivity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're literally telling me Microsoft don't stipulate any form of exclusivity into their deals. It's like, where on earth where, did he get that idea like where, from? Yeah, like, <laughs> Are you telling me? I mean, he's, he's pretty much saying there that if Microsoft make a deal for a game to go day one into Game Pass, yes. that they haven't stipulated that that game can't also go to PS Plus day one. Yes, that's exactly as, what As I'm freaking saying. if they haven't made that deal. <laughs> as freaking if. That's what I'm saying. That's what, yeah, yeah, that's the kind of crazy thing I'm dealing with, man. The, the lack of intellectual honesty is worrying, bro. Nintendo just did it today, too, with the... Um, uh, Goldeneye, the multiplayer is exclusive to a Switch. So if you want to play oh, multiplayer on that, you got to get a Switch. I made a meme of that. Yeah, hey, man, is that I? Hey, yo. Hey, hey folks, yeah, man, is that you? That's that me. Hey, brother. How are you doing, man? How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm really good. Do you know why? Because I've just seen this video, which I'm going to actually save to watch later the development of Treyarch's spider-man 2 from 2004 if you know me you know that i talk about that game all the freaking time that game <laughs> is still untouched in terms of technical achievement when it comes to physics and how r webs interact with the city and the world around you um not even insomniac spider-man comes close to that game in terms of its web swinging uh, physics and the the level of f control it gives to the player and reward for pulling off skill-based 
um, traversal. I, I I really hope Insomniac take a page out of that book, reach out to the developer who patented that, and gets that technology to build up on it for Spider-Man 2. But Spider-Man 2 is said to be exceeding all expectations, so that's exciting. So I'm really hoping they've improved the traversal. Well, I, and DZ might need to jump in here, because again, I'm not a developer, but from what I've read, seen, heard, stuff that's under NDA, Spider-Man 2 plays like a cutscene. There's a lot of talk about it being single shot like what God of War is, but at such a higher rate that wow. there's no gap transitions between cutscenes and, and gameplay. So, I mean, well, I've seen some of the photos that have come out of it. Well, you imagine that, again, the 40, 40 FPS mode. You imagine that, man. That's just... Amazing. Oh, Oh, bro, um, awesome. we are not ready. Sorry, I've just realised this footage is playing in low res. I do apologise. I've just bumped it up to 1440p uh, for you guys to watch. Um, bro, I'm like watching the Stellar... I'm watching Stellar uh, Stellar Blade on um, mm. in 4K. Yo, in 4K, it looks absolutely insane. It really does. Um, it, Someone you know, get that man a towel. <laughs> it is it is it is fantastic oh my god like yeah but how awesome is that though yeah i'm not even gonna front dude this 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 state of play actually was above my expectations <laughs> yeah i'm um, i wasn't expecting much from just 20 minutes but they really they yeah. only threw in okay. two games that i was like come on really and yeah. the rest was just like Okay, this looks dope or freaking amazing. Which, yeah, yeah. Which two were they? Which two did didn't grab you, the mate? The VR titles. <laughs> they just one game. They just. Weird. Yeah, I really kind of wish they had to just let me know that Gran Turismo was going to support it. <laughs> you know what? The, the VR, stuff, the VR stuff because um, well, most people were writing off PlayStation VR uh, because the games that were pre-announced weren't announced with VR support. And I, I kept saying to people like, just wait, just wait, just wait. Cause there are people when resident evil, uh, village was announced, um, you know, back in 2020, um, or tw yeah, in 2020. And they were just like, Oh, it doesn't have VR support. Why would they do VR? And I'm just like, maybe they're, maybe they're waiting to translate all of this to, the next generation of uh, VR, and then look what happened. Um, RE Village and Resident Evil 4 Remake are both going to be fully playable um, from start to finish in VR, just like Resident Evil 7 was on the original PSVR. So um, I'd say just just give it some time. Like, um, you know, Kaz, Kaz plans to support uh gt7 um quite well and you know wasn't it gt6 or was it gt sport that had uh vr support uh, it was GT sport it was sport okay yeah so get out of that. <laughs> yeah gt6 was a ps3 game right no uh gt6 was ps3 yeah gt6 was ps3 okay yeah yeah so it was gt sport um that was uh GT Sport was very much the um, the thing. So yeah, I expect I expect GT Seven uh, to get the VR support and everything. Um, but it's going to be a later time, you know. They'll probably wait to announce that as a as a part of the the PlayStation VR experience um, showcase. Um, and I think they should definitely do one of those. Um, yeah, this was pretty good. This was a pretty good showcase, guys. Um, Twenty minutes. Uh, it didn't overstay its welcome. Um, the games that they showed, most of them had, most of them were pretty spectacular. Um, 
God of War, oh my god. <laughs> bro, that story trailer, it gave me goosebumps, bro. Like, for real. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing. Like, I'll say something controversial here. I kind of wish they hadn't shown it. How come? It's, uh, I, don't, I don't want them peeking behind the curtain too much on this game. Like, no. if, if, if they're going to give a snippets like that, it, it's, it's leaning more towards we're going to get either a, a short state of play closer to launch that's not really going to give us anything new or it's going to tell us too much. And I, I really don't want to know. I, I just, just want to be fully surprised by this game. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But, I, you know. Um, I just think this is a testament to the fact that when you when you break it down on paper, we've seen multiple games that we didn't even know were in development. Tekken 8 um, and that Team Ninja game, Rise of the Ronin. Um, mm-hmm. And... It, it, it tells me, and that's again, I can't stress a Sony published game. That is one of those 20 games that um, that uh, Herman Hull said they, they have it in development. Well, it might not be, you know, because whether he was referring to the games that only first party studios are working on when he said we have 20 games in development right now, some 20, 20 games, or was it 30 games? I can't remember. I don't want to misquote him. It's 20. Uh, it was over 25, 25 and it's not yeah, part of it. Game. 25 games. First party. Wasn't that just first party so, yeah, was yeah, about? yeah, it was just first party. Um, um, but I'm not sure whether... It, because technically that Team Ninja game is a first party IP. Because it's Sony published. Well, yeah. So yeah. I don't I don't yeah. know if that falls into those twenty five or whether that's outside of those twenty five. Uh, because there's an it's estimated... There's an estimated forty to forty-five games in development. Um, I think somewhere along the lines, they actually said some forty if you include second party. Um, so either way, that's one of them, right? That's one of those games. Uh, that Team Ninja game, that Rise of the Ronin. There is so much more yet to show. Tekken Eight was another one, although I'm not sure if if that's a a, a PlayStation console exclusive or not. Um, nah, they, they showed it before they mentioned exclusive. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's, no. um, it, it's, uh, it's very much multi platform, but, um, but PlayStation definitely has uh, the marketing rights for this. So they're going to be the ones who are promoting the game, yeah. much like their partnership with uh, Capcom. Yeah, I'm glad, so I'm think, glad you've raised it. Think about it. Think about that. Remember what nine, twelve months ago when they bought, well, whenever they bought Evo, the, the comment was, "Oh, they're going to become the home of fighting games." They got Street Fighter Six. Yes, it's multi-plat, but it will play best on PlayStation. You've got Tekken Eight coming now. They've had Guilty Gear Strive recently. Uh, Grand Blue Fantasy, or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. um, and there's two others that I'm that elude my memory here right now. But this this is five or six brand new fighting games that are coming out and they're just going to be absolute magic yeah big facts so, just just replaying Tekken 8 trailer in at half speed <clears throat> it's just like it's it's godly it's incredible I can't believe this was all real time real time rendered footage captured from a title in yeah. development some content may change in the final product but yeah that camera cut in um, technology that they're implementing if that is made into the final game and not mere concept that's a game changer yeah. that's incredible that's a whole new level of immersion right there I'm so I'm so mm. impressed um, they're not mucking around they're not mucking around at all and and you look at yes that's from Bandai and Amco and and I, I put my hand up and say I didn't I fell asleep I didn't catch the Nintendo Direct live so I watched it on a replay this morning, and I happened to finish it about five minutes before the PlayStation started. Play started, and both of them absolutely. And I agree with what Daisy said. It was a solid B B plus for the state of play, uh, and I thought the Nintendo Direct for for targeting their audience was a solid B plus as well. Um, but yeah. just the sheer difference between Nintendo quality games and some of those games are sharp as anything on that that system like the octopath traveler 2 
the the way they built that world, yes, mm-hmm. it looks like an isometric RP, old still style JRPG, but it just it the, it was sharp. The, the the drawings were sharp. Nothing was really blurry. Everything was was brilliant. And then you look at what they're wheeling out on PlayStation, and you go, well, clearly you can see where PlayStation's influence because there were Bandai Namco games in that Nintendo Direct, which is why I bring the comparison up. And Square Enix ones and that as well. You look at the difference between developing for the Switch, which is a leading console everywhere in terms of units sold and players and all the rest of it. And then you look at what they're building for the PlayStation and you can see the impact that the technology and the quality of the tools has. It's phenomenal what they're building. And that's with third parties. You imagine, oh, and you saw what happened with some of the couple of those exclusives with Ronan and Project E. I can't remember what's called. Uh, Stella, Stella's Stella Blade. Stella Blade. Stella Blade. Yeah. You look at you look at the quality in those, and they're third party developed. You like, and then you saw what God of War Ragnarok was at the end from a first party, and man, like, and that's on YouTube where it's compressed. <laughs> Yeah, and and it was weren't streaming it in 4K. Like Daisy's been watching some of those 4K replays. I haven't got round to them yet. Imagine what it's going to look like running native. Oh, it's we ain't ready not, because it's... compression still has its flaws. Like I was watching God of War trailer uh, in 4K on full screen, and when I pause it, the compression is terrible, and that's 4K. It's like yeah. these games are going to look. A whole different yeah. level when we see it. Retro running like that. Whoa, whoa, one at a time. Yes. Sorry. Say it again, Retro. So, I said, did anyone notice the nod to the Street Fighter trailer in this? When, it, yeah, I, you know, I saw when that. When Kazuya tenses his muscle, they yeah. showed that exact same thing off in the Street Fighter uh, trailer. The oh, muscle yeah. flex yeah. in game on the in game model. Look, you know, I'm like, you Damn thing on right now. Let me go put this damn Tekken 8 trailer on right now because, son, ugh. bro, I you don't understand how you said, I'm a big Tekken fan, man. This this is the best looking thing I've seen in ages, man. Like, I can't yeah. believe how even good. when he grabs when he grabs the feather, watch his chest, how his chest chest tenses at that split moment mm. that he that he grabs that his hand closes. Him? Yeah, it's crazy. It's something. Amazing. One, one, way, of, one of the things is that the way the the water droplets is, bro. Yeah, for real. Uh, absolutely. Sit, sit, sit down, blowing. sit down, Daisy, before you fall down, mate. Yeah, he's uh, he's loving this even more than us. Uh, our Daisy. <laughs> hey, you better hush. I bet. <laughs> I don't blame you, fam. Flipping heck. Even making I'd, me sweat. I'd tell him to have a cold shower, but it wouldn't work. Um, I'd, I'd tell him to go and have a cold shower, but I don't think that'd help. No, facts. Uh, go have a cold no, shower. But look, but... <laughs> <laughs> to be, um... I'm to to be you like, rascal. Oh, you rascal. Die. <laughs> Do you remember that? Look, Off uh, Lies of P. Oh, you, yeah. you dirty rascal. Die. That voiceover. I love it. That 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 has to be um, place placeholder. Holder. Yeah, facts. That yeah, was so funny. That was so funny. Go the, on, go on, uh, Folky. What were you saying, bro? Sorry, uh, I was for twenty minutes state of play, and and the Nintendo Direct prior to it, have had more of an impact. That's that's just I don't even know what the right what way to phrase it, but it sort of brought gaming community alive yes they've been starved for news and all the rest of it it's it's brought them a lot of the you know conversation live around the games look at what's coming look at how good it is i can't wait to play that look at the cadence of release and all you know it's square enix had over 10 games in that nintendo direct and we saw no square enix announcements in this from memory in this playstation state of play but we know that there's at least eight Square Enix games that are coming that are, look really decent, like Harvest Stellar and Octopath Traveler 2, and you know, we've got Forspoken's coming and whatnot. We know there's games coming from them uh, between now and March next year when Final Fantasy 16 is supposed to be dropping. Like, 
you look at what they've done with two shorter shows and you go, holy crap, they still haven't shown us any of the big stuff yet. I mean, look how excited we're getting over third party bits and pieces. And, and this whole narrative that PlayStation has abandoned Japan. Look at, look, look at some of the games we saw today that we know are coming to PlayStation. Like, how could you sit there and say that they've abandoned Japan? Like, come on, have a look at it. Just, Oh, because of the organized the Japanese studio, you know what I mean. Yeah, people conflate uh, the... because they changed the name of the Japan studio. It means they're not supporting Japanese devs anymore, yeah. even though they've still got a Japanese dev studio. Yes, yeah. still mm-hmm. employing people. And the... yeah. I mean, but you think about sorry, think about the the, the dichotomy here. Um, <sighs> Lies of P. I'm gonna pick on it. Because it can, because it pissed me off. The dirty scoundrel. Oh, nah, yeah. Lies of P goes day one into Game Pass, and what we saw was, I'd say it was double A. That's my my perspective. Double A, you know. And if you had the choice between Lies of P and I can't remember the freaking name. I keep calling it Project E. Stellar Blade. Um, Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade. I think that's a garbage name anyway. They should have left it as Project Eve. But if you had to pick between Stellar Blade or Lies of P being where you secured that deal, it's there's the difference being shown yet again. Look at the difference between the two. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, yes, two different games. Hello? Folky? Look at the Folky. Folky. Yeah. Folky, you just you, you just died for a minute. Could you repeat the last fifteen um, seconds? Sorry, uh, it's just saying. You look at the stark difference in the quality between Lies of P and Stellar Blade, and yes, they're very different games, but still, like you can see where the magic's been sprinkled. Mm-hmm. Well, to be quite fair, um, Stellar Blade is a AAA game in Korea. Um, Made by Korean studios, uh, there uh, that team is about that team is about seventy people, um, and they've got they secured funding very very early on in their project. Um, Korea does have a lot of uh, game funding um, in their country for game development, so like that studio got pretty got that studio got funding pretty well so like they were already onto something and they were uh, they were using unreal engine 4 and then they moved on to 5 and sony uh it wasn't just uh shuhei basically went over and took a look at those projects and said okay i want this i want that and i'm taking Mm -hmm. 12 so um so yeah um uh, lies of p lies of p is a is made by a smaller team um and it's take it's like another Soulsborne game that's uh you know very much along those lines and the production and everything falls within uh it's like mortal shell in my sense it looks great um but that's very much a double a mid-tier developer versus a triple a developer that got more fun right so the scope of this game is better the production is better. Um, there's professional voice acting and everything going on in, in Stellar Blade versus, you know, so, yeah. Um, I do hope that Lies of P could... fills that huge itch that Bloodborne fans have uh, for the genre, and it looks phenomenal. Like, I'm not going to ca- ca- cap because it's going to Game Pass Day 1. I think, I think it's... I think the developers are kind of are, are underselling themselves a little bit personally going to a subscription service day one. But if Game Pass made them a very good deal, which I probably suspect they have because they are desperate yeah. they are desperate for a, a relatively hyped game uh, which Liza P is. Uh they are desperate for something because they've been so dry this year for and Game Pass has been so dry. They probably splashed a huge amount on Lies of P devs and then paid a lot less to get the other filler around Lies of P onto Game Pass, um, like the, the the simulators and stuff like that. Um, but either that, way... That, sorry, that, 
Go on. That's a fair... So let's just say, dudes, and, and I accept what he's saying, and that, that's a fair comment. I suppose what I was trying to articulate was Stellar Blade, and, and you could probably interchange three or four of the other games that were shown today anyway. Stellar Blade, in terms of quality and whatnot, being an exclusive to PS5 console, or exclusive to PS5, it doesn't have to be exclusive to PS5 console, it's just exclusive to PS5. It's such, and yes, there's reasons for it, but it's such head and shoulders above what's on others. And it's just, it comes back to the argument of why can't Xbox get that sort of stuff on their consoles? Mm-hmm. Comes back to Game Pass, and, bro, and, because these games won't yeah, sell hat, on Xbox. And hat, hats off to Shuhei and the rest of them who have worked tirelessly into those SAP. All right. I'm still dumbfounded at, at it was only 20 minutes and I still can't remember everything that was in it because so much of it was, holy shit, that thing looks amazing. And I mean, even those VR ones that you didn't like, that that um, Iron Ball Studios or whatever it was called, their first crack at it, it might not look that flash, but I'm interested in that game. I want to know what the hell's going on there. The, the, like the trailer was enough to get me hooked on, I want to know more about this. So... Yeah, huge facts. I agree, hundred um, percent. Guys, what an amazing show! Like that, that I, I was well happy with that state of play. Yeah, um, I think it's shut down yeah, a lot of proper, narratives. Um, proper happy, proper happy with it. Um, but this is—it all comes to managing expectations, and mm. I want people to manage their expectations. Facts. I was not run wild. Yeah, when you manage the expectations, then you know it's good. Then, then you can't really be disappointed too much. But then, when you get to the PlayStation showcases, like the forty-minute and the hour showcases that they're known to have, that's when you need to let your uh, let your imagination run wild because you know. So, um, yeah, this was a this was a pretty good one. This was a pretty good one. Um, they they did well. They did well. This was a solid B for me. Um, you know, mm-hmm. what would have made it? What would have made it better is if I saw some Pragmata. If I saw, you know, if I saw some more first party stuff. But this was good. This was good. Big facts. Big facts. Well, I get I get the sense that Pragmata is going to be a, a PS exclusive because they would have something to show if they don't show anything at tgs you get yeah. almost penciled in for the showcase the, i think they're gonna if it doesn't show up at tgs tomorrow then it's gonna be then it's literally gonna be um it's gonna be a part of the playstation showcase because that was where it first debuted um uh, yeah. so and there's only is it only pragmata and little devil inside the only two from the original ps5 launch showcase that haven't hit yet are they yeah. the only two? Yeah, those yeah. are the only two remaining, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it sucks. I mean, Little Devil Inside, it sucks what they've had to go back and redo. Um, I can understand why, but it just, you know, to put that kind of pressure on it, just at that late stage, I think it, it sucks that they had to go back and do that. But, you know, Craig is a different story. They've obviously put that off to, to do something major, so. Yeah. Um. I'm definitely seeing that this Team Ninja game, Rise of the Ronin, is the same engine that they used for... Um, Neo. For... Uh, oh, my days. I'm getting a brain fart. Um, what was that? Neo. Like? Neo. Neo. Uh, but it does oh. look significantly overhauled in terms of how they've managed to render materials this time around. Like, yeah. yeah. It looks significantly more improved in terms of the lighting engine that they're using and... All, all that good stuff. It, it looks for not it like I'm really impressed with what Team Ninja are pulling together with this game, and I love the fact that it's a new IP. You know, it's uh, it's a ways out though, bro. So it'll it will get better. Yeah. This was this was um, this is 2024. It gives so me this is man. This is yeah. This is 2024. So yeah, big facts, guys. I'm I'm probably gonna wrap this up. Um, have the panel kind of give their final thoughts on it all and say whatever they want to say um and then keep this relatively shorter and sweet 
than normal because we started very late tonight here in the UK, um, it, and it's ten to one. So <laughs> in the morning, and the missus has work uh, tomorrow. So, um, but yeah, um, guys, let's let, let's finish finish off uh, with your overall thoughts about what what was shown and what this says about the current state of PlayStation. There's a lot of doom and gloom surrounding Sony um, in today's kind of, well, within the Twitter culture anyway, um, and a lot of fanboy narratives. But from what I've seen, they've put on one of the best showcases we've seen in a while here. Um, it's, um, it is a, it's a short one for sure. Um, but, um, you know... Anything that happens on Twitter, it's very much an echo chamber, um, and that's you just got to be mindful of that. Um, uh, doom and gloom, fud and negativity are the quickest things to spread um, and whatnot. But the reality is, right now, Microsoft does not have anything that's releasing as a AAA exclusive for their platform. Um, this year, and the year is almost over, and they don't have anything. Um, so if you want to look at who's in a very tough situation, it's them. Um, you know, mm -hmm. there's a string of things happening in terms of management uh, that's um, happening right now uh, in Microsoft's camp that should have some people worried. Um, but PlayStation is de PlayStation is delivering, and these showcases, these smaller ones that they've been doing, is showing that they haven't taken their foot off the gas. They're silent, um, and that's fine. Um, bosses move in silence. Um, you know, you can't choreograph your whole thing. You can't choreograph your whole plan and let people know. So, um, PlayStation is in a good spot. Um, this. The Activision deal thing that's going on right now is a talk of the town because people have said people have their feelings about it, right? But um, in terms of what's the current thing right now that gamers want is the games, and the games are coming. And Sony, no, Sony's Sony's really working really hard behind the scenes to to deliver things. So. The state of play, like I said, it was a solid B. There was stuff in there for everyone, and um, it started off with a banger with Tekken, um, and then it went right on into the other stuff, and then closed off with some really, really strong PlayStation uh, console uh, exclusives, which is what people own consoles for. So this was a good stuff. Um, yeah. We... we... We own consoles to play games, not to make podcasts to talk about games. And <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, we're doing both uh, with PlayStation, yeah. and that that that's what's important. And uh, we're not just doing one and not the other, um, or rather, we're not just doing the latter and not the former. Um, and I, I just, I just think you know, I'm now excited for. For for 2024, for this amazing looking Rise of the Ronin, flipping heck. It ain't just Wolverine you have to look forward to in 2024, fam. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who, who could say, who would rather play this over what? Because Starfield got a bigger uh, showing than this, you know, a longer time. But I think this thing looks tremendously better than the Starfield. This ain't an Xbox versus PlayStation thing. It's just a one-to-one -one of... I mean, that thing just looks a heck of a yeah. lot better and looks like it yeah. plays better. And But to me, like I said earlier, I mean, I'm just happy for everybody that kept their PS5s and PS4s because they're going to have some pretty awesome stuff to play mm -hmm. from now till... You know? People have been crying in their reaction to God of War Ragnarok's latest trailer. I, I was close. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I was close to getting. Um, I was getting emotional I'm... watching that bad boy. Well, when we were watching it, you and uh, you and Retro were like eight seconds ahead. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I I always Stop surprise when when, when, <laughs> when we're doing live streams. When we're doing live streams, if you're on the panel, 
I always encourage people to watch who are on the panel to watch the official PlayStation or the official mm-hmm. source video whilst on Discord. So then they can watch it at the same time as mm-hmm. I'm watching it rather than watching some kind of delayed footage on my channel. Um, it always works out better. That's what I do on Saltiest Gaming's podcast as well uh, mm-hmm. when we do live streams with him. Uh, it just It's just a lot a lot better um and more up to speed uh what were your thoughts tool man on this on this showcase oh i thought it was uh i mean um like dz said i mean that tekken 8 i I have always loved tekken tekken's been probably my favorite tekken 3 was my favorite fighting game back in the day i played the crap out of tekken 3 and I was pretty much just uh, fighting games and uh, racing games, you know, for quite a long time. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Tekken 8 and then uh, the uh, Stellar Blade, I like that from the first showing that they had when it was just the Project D. Um, but I really like that. That that one does look really good. It's really um, cool. I've never been into VR or anything, so I'm, I'm not into the VR stuff. Uh, but I can appreciate people that, that do like that stuff. But, um, those didn't really do much for me there. I think the horizon that they showed before uh, into the whatever, uh, the mountain one looks a lot better. The mountain, yeah. Um, um, but, uh, yeah, this Ronin one, this Ronin one, wow, this thing. I think like you guys are saying, it's kind of a Sekiro, Assassin's Creed, and uh, Ghost of Tsushima all wrapped into one. I mean, this thing looks insane. Looks very And then, of ambitious. course, God of War. I mean, what, what can you say about God of War? I mean, it, it looks like you're going to have a ton of more stuff to do and a lot more abilities, and, you know, you're hoping you can get uh, Mjolnir from um, and use it, too. So, I mean, it, yeah. That would be amazing. That, that scene where flipping your Leviathan axe hits Mjolnir and they the two hit each other is just probably the most amazing <laughs> scene I could have imagined to see in a God of War trailer. So I'm well, I'm so hyped and excited for that. But Kratos versus Thor, already, it's about to go down. Go on, Folky. People already asking if we can use that axe, uh, use the hammer once we beat him. Because you know, you, like in that scene, leave you notice it, how they surprise. behave very similar. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why I didn't want to say anything. Yeah, I've got more questions. Exactly. You know what? I do imagine, I can imagine it being used as a lightning like catalyst. Like, you know how Blades of Chaos are flame, Leviathan Axe is frost. I imagine Milner would be lightning and thunder. And, like, you yeah, shoot lightning yeah. out of it, and it, like, in spectacular form, kind of traverses from enemy to enemy and shatters entire groups of... Um, enemies like that would be really cool I, I i'm pretty certain like just out of pure kind of conjecture uh i've got my frost cat on uh that you can use you, milner you, oh, oh. you know i'm sorry willie sorry go on toolman I, I was just thinking when you were talking about mjolnir there as they you know kind of how end game ended up with captain america <laughs> what if if uh, Kratos wields it first, but he's in a battle and is trying to fight for his life or whatever, what if Atreus is the one that picks him up? You know, kind of a same kind of scene, picks up the hammer and you don't know who it is. And, you know, use it. I don't know. It would be kind of cool. Yeah, that but... would be. Oh, man. I'm just so excited. I just don't want to know anymore now. And I just want to experience that mm-hmm. incredible, incredible story in game um, when it releases. Goosebumps from head to toe, I had fun. Goosebumps. Uh, Folky, what about you? What was your thoughts on the whole show? Oh man, um, yeah, uh, I was I was pumped to see some of that stuff on there. As everybody knows or should know by now, I'm a massive JRPG fan, and I love the games that come out of Japan too. So I got my fill, um, a massive fill of it today, especially with the Nintendo Direct as well. So there's, uh, yeah, I just some of those games like the the. Ishin like a dragon from Sega. Oh, as soon as I saw it, I went, it looks like, you know, um, Kiryu, and that looks like, it was like, holy shit, they actually remade that thing. Um, and there was just some awesome stuff out of that. Oh, I, 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 yeah, solid B+. Um, I don't think there was too much in there that, that 
that well for me personally there was nothing in there that i just went nah past don't want to see it um though i am intrigued they got a controller for god of war ragnarok maybe we'll get our um maybe we'll get some skins for the ps5 limited edition or something like that but mm. yeah I, I thought it was pretty good pretty good uh and and a, an awful lot of of games coming that just yeah mm -hmm. I, i'm you know and none of that stuff was first party none yeah, of it was that, first party that's amazing isn't you know it? like whew, they just keep the, the I shouldn't say the cadence just the supply it is the whole thing is being a business is to sell games and the supply Facts. of games they got is insane you cannot but, you yeah. cannot watch this showcase and then come moaning to me about how sony is bad for making deals with third-party developers like get take that narrative and shove it up your ass it's it's just the most ridiculous asinine new narrative to come out of 2021 and 2022 uh, and it's all because they're trying to justify the complete change on the industry that game pass is having and affecting um but yeah it's the same, it's basically saying the xbox 360 era was terrible <laughs> and we all know that's bullshit yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know and and, and it, it just points out like that comment everyone went nuts about PlayStation responded to Nintendo on Twitter yesterday, and they said, "Oh, it's a big day tomorrow with the big eye." And everyone starts conjecturing all the rest of it. And I was sitting there going, "Well, for whatever reason, they've happened on the same day. I wonder if there's going to be anything that's a double up." And from memory, no double ups. Mm -hmm. There was nothing shown at either one that yeah. was already like Sony showed yeah. nothing that was already shown at Nintendo, and yeah. it was just. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the buffet. Have fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Martinez yeah. says he loves to see the support for PlayStation platform in, in Japan um, and how they're supporting the Japanese industry. Um, and, you know, I agree. And it just proves you don't need to buy these studios to create amazing products with them that grow them as a studio and benefit them but also benefit the platform that's invested in them and that ultimately yep. is how a successful relationship works with third-party developers and the industry would you prefer that they don't do yeah. business with third-party developers and only make first-party games it's just a silly idea that hasn't been thought through when people run with this and if you haven't heard this narrative guys i'm very happy for you you probably are not on twitter um, mm. it's a crazy, crazy ass narrative. They don't call it the Twitter dome for no reason. Mm -hmm. Big facts, big facts. <laughs> anyway, you got to go, mate. Yes, Hurry I up. do. I've got to go. Uh, retro last. So I'll do retro my last again, is he? Retro's got to give his. Retro, retro's yeah. got to give his takes. His, his outtake. You can't you forget my again, brother. brother. You can't forget my brother. <laughs> who's, who's, I appreciate that thing. Who's, who's, who's retro? Give a fuck. Who is retro? Yeah. Who is he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm only kidding, brother. Go on, man. Very nice, to be honest. <laughs> My brother, uh, retro. What did you think? That controller, though, bro. Oh, that shut controller. up! Don't even talk about the controller, bro. Do you know what? Honestly, in all honesty, it felt like the PS One slash PS Two kind of shows to me. Yeah. Honestly, big, big it had that feeling of a lot of new Japanese kind of experimental games and new stuff. So I'm ha I was happy enough with it, man. I mean, yeah, we got to see a bit of everything, so I'm happy. Yeah, me too, brother. Me too. Guys, what an awesome show. Uh, once again, shout out to everybody in the chat. Uh, Salty Gaming, thank you, brother, for dropping it by. I'm sorry I wasn't there with you on uh on your live stream bud wish i could have been but you know how it is with these shows um it's a it was a big event and uh i'm glad we both could uh could could get to see it uh d wolf shout out to you sir we look forward to having you on the show soon mr brian king the uh chad himself the uh king of icon era yeah, really blowing up that forum and it's an honor and a privilege to be recognized as your official podcast. As the official podcast of Icon Era, it is a real privilege as I love Icon Era. 
it is a site that I've promoted multiple times off without any sponsorship or anything because it's just that good and it is definitely worthy of your time if you guys in the chat have not checked it out please do so there's a link below uh, please check it out um, or type in the website that you can see at the bottom right of the screen with the blue flame uh, logo um, and yeah looking forward to many exciting uh, shows in the future with uh, your support as well with the support and backing of Icon Era it's going to be a very successful partnership I have no doubt um, shout out to Jonathan Martinez thank you for your support as always buddy uh, everyone in the chat Ron awesome uh, great to see you here Retro whoever that is thank you I appreciate you I'm not only kidding. <laughs> no, but for real. Uh, it doesn't feel you. like it sometimes. Com compost, <laughs> compost and earth. Um, uh, all of you guys. Doomsayer. Love seeing you here, brother. Thank you. Um, and thank you to the panel, man. Uh, Folky, Retro, DZ, Toolman. Appreciate you. It was great to have you guest with us, Toolman, tonight. And uh, it's, just been, it's just been amazing. Um, loved it. Loved every second. So, guys. We really hope you like the new look and the new style and the new format. Um, hope it hasn't taken too much adjustment. Follow these guys uh, on Twitter. You can see the handles below on the screen. Uh, give them all a follow. They're invaluable. Uh, Toolman, where can we find you, buddy? Uh, just like it is there, Toolman underscore 55. Fantastic. Twitter. Toolman underscore PlayStation, 55. just like my name is there brilliant yeah facts um so follow toolman as well and uh thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight it's been awesome look forward to 2020 uh three and four guys it's gonna be nuts and um yeah have a good one remember don't be a donut use your noggin peace later everyone